everybody. I welcome you all to today's session on grammar. So today we are going to discuss a very important grammar topic, articles and prepositions. So articles and prepositions, I'm sure you have studied from your high school and your plus two. And you know that these are small words, tiny words, as well as uh, long phrases sometimes, but which cause a great deal of problem for students who are non-native speakers of English. Particularly in a country like India, students often tend to get into problem when they begin to use these articles and prepositions. So uh, my, my dear students, the sooner you master this uh, usage of articles and prep prepositions, the better off you will be as a communicator in English. So let us look at articles first. So what do we mean by articles? In fact, when you speak of uh, parts of speech, in English there are eight parts of speech and you don't have any separate parts of speech called articles. Then what are articles? Articles are nothing but adjectives. They are also called determiners. Determiners or they are a kind are nothing but a kind of adjectives. So let's see what do we mean by articles. Articles as I was just telling you is an adjective and like adjective these articles can modify nouns. Articles as you know um, are used usually in association with a noun. So we will see the usage right now. So we use, what are the articles, how many articles are there in English? There are two articles, one is the indefinite article and one is the definite article, definite article and indefinite article. So how many articles are there? Only two articles. There are two categories of articles, definite article and indefinite articles. So indefinite articles are a and an and definite article is the. So where do we use these articles? We use these articles a, an or the before a noun which we want to introduce. We usually use them in association with noun because as I already told you articles uh, are otherwise called determiners and determiners are nothing but adjectives. And where do you use the adjectives? You use the adjectives in association with a noun, usually before a noun. So first let us compare the usage of the art indefinite articles a and an. So a and an both mean one. When we say a, what, we, what do we mean? We mean singular, we, we, mean, we use them in the singular sense, we mean one. So, A and an are used alternatively. We don't use them together in the same sentence uh, in association with the same noun. We either use A or an. So, where do we use A or an? We use A usually in association with consonant sounds. Nouns which start with a consonant sound are uh, uh, usually used with a with the uh, indefinite article a. What are the consonant sounds known to you? The consonant sounds are b, c, d, f, g, h and so on. So you know that in English there are only five vowel sounds and all the remaining are consonant sounds. So one cardinal rule or ground rule that you need to remember when you are using article a, indefinite article a is that it has to be used in association with those nouns which take a, a consonant sound. So for example, a doctor, a big car, a girl. So here all these are consonant sounds, big, a big car, car is also, car is also a car, I got into a car, I called a doctor because my father was ill. This is a girl who is waiting at the bus stand. So all these are nouns which start with a consonant sound. We also use a, indefinite article a, before nouns which start with a 
u because u is not a consonant sound u is a sorry u is not a vowel sound u is a consonant sound so for example uh, uh, here look at the way it is pronounced we don't say e we say u u means ya yeah. so this is a consonant sound so we use for example university but we say when we are talking about umbrella that starts with a u but it has a a uh sound an umbrella but a university so this is something you need to keep in mind so we use the um, indefinite article a even before sounds which have the feel of the sound of ya and not e or a so sounds like u for example a university and then also sounds which start with eu for instance he is an he is an european many people say but it is incorrect he is a european european also has the same sound as ya in university so this is a university he is a european not an european so we use the indefinite article a before nouns which which take a consonant sound which also includes ya sound now what about the usage of the indefinite article an we use an before the those nouns which start with a vowel sound what are the vowel sounds a e i o and not u but u these are the vowel sounds so for example an apple an interesting film we also used an before some words which start with which take h and where h is silent and it is not uh, uh, accentuated for example i waited for an hour at the bus stand but no bus came i waited for an hour but where you use the h aspirated sound as the hard h like in the word house we say a house but we say an hour it is an honor for me to come here today and grace this occasion it i waited for an hour an honor a history book ha a house ha so in these kinds of uh, sounds which are both voiced and voiceless remember when it is when ha is voiceless we use a an before it and when ha is voiced we use a before it this is the thumb rule you need to keep in mind so this is the distinction between the usage of a or an a or an means one it it represents a singular subject and a or an are alternatively used a is used before the nouns which start with the consonant sound an is used before nouns which start with a vowel sound so now let us compare a an and the usage of these three articles so we usually use a or an to talk about a person a person or a thing for the first time when you are mentioning something for the first time you and uh, you are uh, mentioning it in general because you do, that that subject is may being mentioned for the first time and there is nothing definite known about the subject beforehand in that case we use a or an for example a cd player we use a cd player when we mention the mention i yesterday i went to the supermarket and i bought a cd player but next time when i use when i refer to the same subject the cd player what will i do i will use the the cd player the one that mary bought so look at this usage i bought a cd player and a tv yesterday and joe asked was the cd player expensive so here the cd player when it is first mentioned we use article a and the second time it is understood which cd player you are referring to so here you use the definite article the so when a subject is being mentioned for the first time in a general sense you will use article indefinite article a or an and when it is being mentioned refer to again 
the subject is already understood, is contextualized, then we use the definite article, the. Please keep this in mind. However, there are some special uses of these articles, a, and, and the. For example, a and an is used with prices. For example, it costs 2 pounds a liter. And we also use a or an with reference to frequency. I drink about 3 cups of coffee a day. And you also use indefinite article a or an to talk about speed. You are driving at 90 miles an hour. So here in these contexts you use uh, um, the indefinite article a or an whichever may be the case. And we also use a or an before numbers like 100, 1000 and million where the number is not clear or uh, definite. For example, a thousand people came flocked to the auditorium. That means thousand in a general sense. You don't know the exact number. It is a rough estimate. So a hundred people, a hundred people petitioned the president on his behalf. A thousand days. This project is uh, 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 going to be in vogue for a thousand days. So here uh, we are uh, not giving, if, if I say 200, then I cannot use A before it. I, I borrowed 200 rupees from my friend. I borrowed 8000 rupees from my friend. About a thousand people attended the conference. So this is how we use article A uh, when we are talking about number. We also use A or an when we are talking, referring to jobs. For example, I am a bank manager. He is an engineer at the PWD. I am a bank manager. She is a doctor by profession. So jobs and careers also we use indefinite article A. And we also use the with musical instruments. So here we used article A, but when we are referring to musical instruments, we usually use the. He plays the violin beautifully. She plays the veena. She has been learning the veena from childhood. And we also use the when there is only one of something. For example, if it is one of its kind, for instance, the Taj Mahal. When we say the Taj Mahal, there is no other monument other than the building that you are referring to in Agra. Likewise, you also use article the before public buildings like the General Post Office, the Reserve Bank of India. So, which is one of its kind, we use article the. For example, may I turn on the TV? Generally at home, you will have one TV, you, you will not have multiple TV sets. Likewise, where is Mary? She is in the kitchen. Usually the house will have one kitchen. So where you are talking about one thing the, and that is the only thing, then you use the definite article the. These are some of the uses of the articles. Now, so talking about definite article the, you know from your high school study that definite article the is used for one of its kind and it is also used in certain contexts like where you are talking about rivers, name of the rivers, you say the, uh, the Jamuna, the Ganga, the Godavari, when we uh, refer to, um, for example, oceans, we say the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea and so on. We do not use article the before individual mountains, but we use article the when we are referring to an archipelago. For instance, the West Indies, the West Indian Islands, the Caribbean, or we say we use article the to talk about the Fuji Islands, but we don't say the Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka is considered as one island. So we don't say the Sri Lanka, we just say Sri Lanka. So where you're talking about an archipelago, a cluster of islands, for instance, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Likewise, single mountains, you don't say the Mount Everest. But you say, art, you use article the before a range of mountains, the Rockies or the Himalayas, the Andes. So you use article the before a range of, a chain of mountains or a range of mountains. And we also use articles for um, public carriers, whether it is a ship or whether it is a train. For example, you say the Jammu Express, the GT Express, the Konark Express. 
or you use the Titanic. So when you're talking about ships, the Nilgiris. So these are all big ships. So a public carrier. So for such um, uh, monuments of public importance or passengers or uh, uh, cargo ships, we use uh, article the. So this is how article the is usually used before certain proper nouns and which are names of uh, names of uh, range of Himal uh, range of mountains, names of archipelagos, names of rivers, names of oceans, names of important holy books like the Quran, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Iliad, the o Odyssey, epics like those. These are some of the commonly uh, um, common ways of using the definite article the. Now, where do we omit the article? For example, we don't use articles when we are talking about something or referring to something in general. For example, business people prefer five star hotels. We don't say the business people. So when we are referring to a category of people or people in general, we don't use any articles. We also don't use any article before abstract nouns. You, for example, she appreciates honesty. She appreciates industry. She appreciates uh, sincerity. So here, she hates dishonesty. You, you don't say the, she hates the dishonesty. So before abstract nouns, which are us usually adjectives or qualities, we do not use article the. We also don't use article the to talk about, to refer to language. We don't say, for example, I speak the English well. When I use article the with English, I am referring to the race, the people. The English are very intelligent. The French are more enterprising. So here I am talking about not the language, but I am talking about the people of that nationality. So when you are referring to the language, you don't use article the. But when you put the article the, you are not referring to the language, but you are referring to the people of that particular. That when I say the English, what, what do I mean? I mean the English people, the people who live in Great Britain, who speak English. So I am not, I'm not referring to the language, but I am referring to the people of that particular race or of that particular nationality. Also, we don't use article the before uh, uh, for example, uh, adjectives. We use, for example, he is tall. In general sense, when we talk, we say he is tall. But when we use it in relation to a noun, we can say he is a tall boy. She is very slim. She is slim. She is lazy. I don't say. But when I uh, use it in association, adjective uh, preceding the noun, will take an article. She is an intelligent girl. He is a lazy boy. These are some of the ways in which we may use. But in uh, general, when you are talking only about the adjective, you will not use any article. So as I said, we will also not use article before the names of relations. Okay, you will say, he is my father, but you won't say he is a father or he is an uncle in the general sense. Likewise, we don't use any articles before names of material like gold or silver. You, you just say this glass is made of gold or this glass is made of silver, but you don't say a silver or the gold or, okay. So uh, you don't use articles before material nouns. Likewise, you also don't, it's a, in common fashion, you don't use article before proper nouns when you're referring to individuals like uh, Chennai, Priya, Lotus and so on. You, but you may use it in a different context, but you generally don't say, uh, I called the Satish to my party. I say, I called Satish to my party. So before proper nouns, you normally don't use article. Before abstract nouns, we have already discussed. Before abstract nouns, we don't use any articles, honesty, wisdom, truth, and so on. Before language also, we already discussed, we don't use any article. And we don't use article before certain phrases like at noon or by train or on foot. We don't use any article here. She walked, she walked to the college on foot, not on the foot. He went to the college by bus, not by the bus. She went to school on train 
or by train but not on the train. So, we do not use articles before uh, certain phrases like at noon, by train, on foot and so on. And we also do not use article uh, the before names of countries. You do not say the Germany, the Argentina, the Turkey, etc. We do normally do not use any article. But we may use article the before names of continents like the Europe, the continent of Europe, the North America, the South America. We, we may not use article the before names of cities. We do not say the Beijing, but we say um, the European continent, but we do not say the Europe again, as I, as I just said. The African continent, the continent of Africa, but we do not say the Africa again. So, if you are using it in association with a uh, collective noun, then you will use the continent of uh, uh, Africa, but you do not say the Africa, you just say Africa. Likewise, names of cities also, places, you do not use article the. So, but however, though we do not use uh, uh, article the before names of places or cities or continents, we do use article the when we are talking about um, it being a union or a republic. For instance, you can say the Republic of China. We can say before a republic or the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or the uh, United States of America or the United Soviet Republic, so USSR. Or you can say the uh, Union of India or the uh, Union of uh, or the Union Republic of India. So this is how you can use article before republics, kingdoms, states you can use where you are talking about a conglomeration or a um, uh, combining together of different con uh, units. And for example, the Czech Republic or you can also say the United States. So, this, these are some exceptions, but you do not use normally article the before names of individual countries or even individual continents also. So, let us take up one small exercise. Look at this fill in the blanks exercise here. I would like you to just read it and see if you can answer the question. I went to Dash airport at 6 a.m. yesterday. So, in this blank what will you get? I went to airport at 6 a.m. yesterday. So, if there is a need for an article, put an appropriate. So, what will you uh, 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 use here? Airport is one of its kind. In a particular state, you will, in a particular region, you will have only one airport. So, it is an air, airport is one of its kind. So, it is quite clear that you need to use the definite article the. I went to the airport at 6 a.m. yesterday. I had to catch flight to Paris. What will you write here? I had to catch a flight to Paris. The, li the lines at dash airport were very long, so I had to wait dash long time. The lines, so we have already mentioned the airport, the lines or the queue at the airport were very long, so I had to wait a long time. Once dash plane took off, I tried to get some sleep, but I couldn't. Once, so what are you talking here? It is understood. Once the plane took off, which plane are you referring to? Though it is not mentioned earlier, you are obviously implying which uh, the plane for which you, ha you have booked your ticket. Once the plane took off, I tried to get some sleep, but I couldn't. Then I ate dash pretty good meal, a pretty good meal. So here there is an adjective and there, is, there are two adjectives and there is a noun. So, then I ate a pretty good meal, dash rare occurrence on aer aeroplanes. So, here what is rare occurrence here? A rare occurrence. So, here this is a consonant sound. Uh, then I ate a pretty good meal, a rare occurrence on aer airplanes. Later, I spoke to one of dash flight attendants for a while. Later, I spoke to one of what is the answer here? Can you guess? I spoke to one of the flight attendants because you are using it with the expression one of, okay, one of the flight attendants 
for dash while, for a while. This is how we use it. And she was pretty. She told me that dash pilot of dash airplane was French. She was pretty. She told me that. And how many pilots do you have? Normally in the cockpit you have one chief pilot. That the pilot who is the captain of the ship, okay, the airship was the pilot of the airplane. Here again you will have the. The airplane was French. See, look at here. It's not was the French, was French. I managed to fall asleep for about dash hour. We already discussed hour is voiced, unvoiced, voiceless. So hour H is silent. So for about an hour. After I woke up, I felt refreshed. I ordered a drink, then another. Generally, it was dash pretty smooth flight. Generally, it was, what is the answer? It was a pretty smooth flight. It was a pretty smooth flight. So this is how you can fill the blanks. I hope that you have got some idea. We will be doing a separate handout and we will discuss the rules in little more detail when we are solving the exercises in the handouts. So, now let us take up the next topic of, for our discussion that is prepositions. So, what are prepositions? As you can see, the word preposition has two parts to it, pre and position. So, prepositions are that part of speech or those words which are positioned before a object. So, they tell you the relationship of the noun in relation to the object. So, they convey the position. So, prepositions link nouns and pronouns to objects in a sentence and always introduce a prepositional phrase. So, prepositions are that part of speech which tell you the association or the relationship of the subject which is a noun or a pronoun in relation to the object. The, the object is also a noun or a pronoun that comes after the verb. So, it indicates to you the position, it indicates to you the relationship of the subject with the object which comes after the verb. For example, I am sitting on a chair. Here I is the pronoun, chair is the object and the sitting is the verb and what is the relation? On a chair. I am sitting on a chair. I am uh, walking, I am walking to her. So, this is a preposition of movement. So, I am walking to her means I am starting from point A and going to point B where she is seated. So, I am walking to her. This indicates the movement or direction. Here it indicates the location, it indicates the position. So, these are these words both here on the word on as well as the word to are prepositions and prepositions will indicate three things in a sentence. What do they indicate? They can indicate the location as I am sitting on a chair, I am keeping the book on the table, I am placing the book in the dusk, I am uh, 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 throwing the paper under the table. So here in, in the dusk, on the table, under the table, all these indicate the position or the location. And I am walking to her, I am moving towards her, these indicate the direction. And I will meet you in a while, I will meet you at 6.30. At indicates, in indicates time. So, prepositions are those words which indicate to you either the position of the uh, noun or pronoun in relation to the object. It indicates the position or the location or it indicates the time of an action or it indicates the direction or the movement. Now, look at the prepositions of time. 
you can see that prepositions like by, for, before, after, since, at, in, during, all these are prepositions of time. They indicate the time. Prepositions of location. Let us look at some examples. They indicate the locations or the position of the objects. And here prepositions of time indicates when something happens. By, for, before, after, since, at, during and so on. Prepositions of location indicate the position or the place or the position of the objects. On the table, in the dusk, under the table, in front of my house, among the uh, uh, group, between the two rivers and so on. They indicate to you the position or the location of something. Prepositions of directions. For example, these are used to indicate or show the direction or the movement to and from a fixed point. For example, what are these prepositions? To, from, into, along, over, through, across, around and so on. These are some of the prepositions which indicate to you the direction or the movement. Now, when we are talking about time or when we are talking about place, these prepositions can be used in, on, at. These are indicative of both of time as well as of place. So when you're talking, referring to it in terms of time, so in can be used when you're talking to the parts of the day. For instance, I will meet you in the morning. I will meet you in the afternoon. I will meet you in the month of April. I will meet you in spring. I will meet you in 2021. So it indicates to you the parts of the day, the time of the day, the time of the year, the time of the season and so on. You can use in to talk about specific or general time. I will meet you in an hour's time. I will meet you in two days time. I will meet you uh, in a year after I complete my graduation. This is how we use in. We can use it in to refer to days. We can use it to refer to time zones, time of the day. We can use it to talk, to the, talk about the time of the season, time of the year and so on. And what about at? Sorry, before we go to the at. So we can also use on to talk about time. How do we use on? On a specific, I will meet you on Wednesday. I will meet you uh, on the Monday. So, to discuss this further, I will meet you on Christmas Day. Specific dates, I will meet you on the 9th of April. We use a preposition on. Then, or I will, I will wish her on her birthday. I will gift her a bicycle on her birthday. So, here we have used on in, on, and then at. We use uh, preposition at to indicate time. For instance, specific time periods of the day. I will meet you at lunch time in the canteen. I will meet you in, at, the, uh, at the break time. So these are specific time. I will meet you um, at the canteen uh, in a while. We, ca we can use in and I can say I, I will meet you uh, in the canteen at lunch time. This is how we refer to the specific times of the day. I will meet you at morning uh, uh, near the railway station. These are, this is how. I will meet you at Christmas. I promise to come over to your place at Christmas. I will meet you at dinner time around 8.30. I will meet you at 5 o'clock. So we can use it again to mention the specific time of the day and this is how preposition is used. And then we can uh, replace these prepositions of time in, on, at with also expressions like this, next, last, every. So these prepositions, these three prepositions of time in, on, at can also be substituted with other expressions like this, next, last, every. For example, I'm going home in April can be said I am going home this April. I am playing tennis on Friday. I am playing tennis this, this Friday. 
she left at the weekend, she left this weekend. So, you, you, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to use, only prepositions to indicate the time. You can also substitute these prepositions of time with expressions like this. I will meet you um, on Thursday. I will meet you next Thursday. I saw him last Monday. So, the, this is how we can substitute the prepositions of time in, at, on with expressions like this, next, last and every. I go to church every Sunday. I go to church on Sundays, you can say, or I go to church every Sunday. This is how we use. Now, let us uh, look at some exercises. Look at this. I drink a glass of warm milk to help me sleep at night. So, here there are three answers given for you. So, which is the best one? I drink a glass of warm milk to help me sleep at night. So, we say at night, not in night or on night. Look at the second one. Her birthday is dash April 21st. So, out of these three, which is suitable? Specific date, we said we will use on. Her birthday is on April 21st. Next one, the air is very cold, dash the winter, at, in, on. Which is better answer? The air is very cold in winter. He will go to the mall, dash three hours. He will go to the mall in three hours, time frames. The interview is dash 3 p.m. The interview is at 3 p.m. Specific time frame, specific point of time. The weather is warm, dash the fall season. Fall season means autumn season. The weather is warm in the fall season. And we will be at Long On restaurant, dash Sunday lunch time. We will be at Long On restaurant on Sunday. We, we discussed a particular specific day or specific time. We will take on here. We will be at Long On restaurant on Sunday. Min will travel to Danang dash July in July. So, we have already discussed these prepositions of time. He will travel to Delhi in July. He will travel to USA in the fall season or in spring of 2021. This is how we use the prepositions of time. Now, look at prepositions of location. Let us practice them. The party is dash Anna's house. So, the party is at Anna's house. So, we discussed prepositions of location at Anna's house. I will meet you at the Hilton Hotel. So, specific place at. He has a large dash his house. He has, he has a large dog dash his house. He has a large dog in his house, not at his house or on his house. He has a large dog in his house. His house dash the coast dash, dash now trunk. His house is on. My house is on 10 James Street. So, when you are talking about the street, you will say on the street. My, my house is on the Gandhi Marg, on the Gandhi Street, on, on the coast, on the street. Then dash Natrang, in Natrang. Natrang is a place. So, I live, I live on the Gandhi Street in Tenali. This is how I say. So, with reference to the place, we use in. On our trip, we dash a cafe. On our trip, we stopped at a cafe. Here at A. So, we stopped at a roadside cafeteria to have a glass of milk. So, at A. Next one. He likes to surf dash the internet. He likes to surf on the internet. You surf on the wave. You surf on the internet. She waited dash the bus stop. She waited at the bus stop. The cat is dash the bed. The cat is on the bed. The article was dash the newspaper. The article was in the newspaper. 
there is a pen dash my pocket there is a pen in my pocket there was a bug dash the ceiling there was a bug on the ceiling there was a lizard on the ceiling there is a 10 rupee note in my pocket there is a inter, there is an interesting book in my bag so this is how we used prepositions of location in my pocket in my bag in the dust in the cupboard this is how we use prepositions of location so pre coming to prepositions of direction let us look at how the prepositions of direction work into what are some of the prepositions of uh, mm, prepositions of direction into across over through around are some of the prepositions of movement or prepositions of direction look at these commonly used ones into shows motion or movement the cat jumped into the box the ball fell into the river she poured some boiling water into the teapot the man threw rubbish into the river i walked into the room so into indicates going from outside to inside and it indicates motion or movement i kept the book in uh, i kept the book in my bag i searched i looked into my bag to see if i had that book look into something i put it in the bag i looked into the room i peeped into the room so here it indicates the um, uh, um, relationship of movement or motion or direction look at the next one across across means on the opposite side the boy swam across the river siti is walking across the road ali walked across the river by using the old bridge so in all these we use across look at around around means moving in a circle the cat ran around the stool chasing the mouse i spoke around that topic uh, i circled three times around the temple so around means a circular motion next over the boy jumped over the fence the cat leaps over the drain so here over indicates again movement or direction ali kicked the ball through the window amir threw the rubbish through the window we walked through the tunnel to reach the other side of the river we uh, walked through the corridor so these are all uh, uh, prepositions of direction and prepositions of movement now where do you use these prepositions of uh, direction and movement you use them when you are talking about prepositions of location prepositions of time prepositions of movement or direction can all be used to give and receive directions when you are visiting a new place so turn to your left turn on the left turn on the corner of or turn on the right okay these are some ways we okay uh, uh, go across the road go along the road for another 5 yards before you turn to the left on the left you will find a big building so these are prepositions which give you uh, it is about 5 minutes walk away from the bus stand it's a 5 minutes walk away from the bus stand you have to walk along the road for about uh, uh, 2 kilometers before you see the building so all these prepositions of time uh, and uh, place and movement are used to talk about the spatio temporal location of something or the arrangement of something if you are talking about the topography of a place you will talk about the arrangement of the different locations in a town using these prepositions of direction and prepositions of location and sometimes even prepositions of time it is just a five minutes walk away so here you need to walk for five minutes so these are all four is also preposition of time so here these will come handy you need to master them so that in when you are referring to in the context of functional english when you are referring to places and referring to ways to ways to get to that places showing directions to someone you will use these prepositions of 
movement as well as location as well as time. These are, this, so this is a very important skill to master. So let us wrap up today's session on prepositions by once again uh, uh, seeing what we just learned. So as I already said, at, on, at, on, in are prepositions to show time as well as place. We already discussed it. And these prepositions link nouns and pronouns with objects to objects and introduce prepositional phrases. Okay, for instance, she walked to the uh, uh, railway station. So to the railway station together is a prepositional phrase. So there are always exceptions to these rules. Sometimes there are some exceptions, but we will discuss them when we are doing the handout. We will be give, sharing the handout with you, the exercise handouts. In the course of doing that, you will get a better hang of it. This is just a brief capsule to refresh your memory on prepositions. So some of the exceptions you already know. We ride in a car, but we ride on a bus. And we ride on a, we, uh, we travel on a plane or on a train, okay, or on a subway. So we take a bus or we, we can say, I went there by bus. I traveled on a bus. I rode on a bus. All these are used in depending upon the context and depending upon the structure of the sentence in which you are using them. So I hope that you will all be able to revise these concepts again. And when we do the handouts, you will get a better hang of it. So with this, I will conclude today's session on articles and prepositions. So we will continue with the discussion once we start discussing the exercise handout. Thank you very much.